Hello and welcome to all my dear students. So today finally we are going to start with the last chapter last lecture of the chapter molecular basis of inheritance that is on DNA fingerprinting. It is a very small topic, a very simple and easy to understand conceptual topic. So let's start with today's class where we are going to deal in with the concept of DNA fingerprinting. This concept was proposed by Alec Jaffery. So first point you are going to write in your notes is that father of DNA fingerprinting. The first person to perform this, Alec Jaffery. However, the father of Indian DNA fingerprinting is Dr. Lalji Singh. So father of normal DNA fingerprinting, I mean international level but this concept was brought in India by Dr. Lal G. Singh. Right? Understood everyone? Okay. Now, next what you are going to understand the concept behind DNA fingerprinting. What is the purpose of DNA fingerprinting? See beta. I hope you all are watching CIDs and all such shows where the criminals, see the, the person goes on the crime site and they collect some sample and then they try to match it with the suspects. So basically that what is the, what are they doing? They're matching their fingerprints. They're matching the DNA copies of the sample they collected from the criminal site and of the suspect. So basically this DNA fingerprinting is useful in solving some criminal cases as well as it is also utilized for establishing paternity relationship among the organisms. So use of DNA fingerprinting. There are two prominent use. Both are used in forensic sciences to help some judiciary related cases. Number one of uh, like establishing The paternity relationship, establishing the paternity relationship. Second is identifying, identifying the criminal. <laughs> from the samples collected from the crime site with the help of the samples collected from the crime site. Now, how is it done and what is the principle? Now, you have seen who proposed the concept of DNA fingerprinting and what are the uses. But basic point which I will tell you before I start with the concept of DNA fingerprinting beta, with the help of Human Genome Project, with the help of HGP, we came to know that 99.9% .9 of every Homo sapien genome is same. Only that 0.1% of genome is different that makes us all different from each other. So that 0.1 difference is utilized in DNA fingerprinting. However, if it is monozygotic twin case, then in them the DNA fingerprinting result can even come similar. Right? So next point that you are going to add on over here is with the help of human genome project. Now, with the help of HGP. What we came to know? Yes, very good. We came to know that our 99.9% .9 genome is same. So basically we use 0.1% difference in genome is the basis of DNA fingerprinting. So 0.1% of difference in genome beta is the basis of fingerprinting. 
सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट बेटा नाउ दीज पॉइंट वन परसेंट ऑफ डिफरेंस कैन बी रिपीटेटिव सीक्वेंसेज बिकॉज यू नो आर मेजर पोर्शन ऑफ द जीनोम इज मेडअप ऑफ रिपीटेटिव सीक्वेंसेज सो नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन नाइन परसेंट इज सेम ओनली पॉइंट वन परसेंट ऑफ द जीनोम विच इज डिफरेंट कैन बी रिपीटेटिव सीक्वेंसेज और कैन ऑल्सो बी यूनिक सीक्वेंसेज सो आर फर्स्ट एम इज टू सेपरेट दोज पॉइंट वन परसेंट ऑफ द जीनोम फ्रॉम द रिमेनिंग नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द जीनोम दैट इज डन विद द हेल्प ऑफ सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन सेपरेट्स द पॉइंट वन परसेंट विच इज यूनिक इन एवरी इंडिविजुअल एंड रिमेनिंग नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट विच इज सिमिलर दैट नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन सिमिलर जिनोम इज नॉट यूटिलाइज फॉर डी एन ए फिंगर प्रिंटिंग ओनली दैट पॉइंट वन परसेंट ऑफ जिनोम विच इज यूनिक इन एवरी इंडिविजुअल दैट कैन बी मेड अप ऑफ रेपिटेटिव सीक्वेंसेज दे आर यूज फॉर डी एन ए फिंगर प्रिंटिंग सो नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट विच वी कैन राइट इज पॉइंट वन परसेंट ऑफ यूनिक repetitive sequences are thus separated are thus separated from the main genome With the help of centrifugation, it is basically density gradient separation that separates the major portion as a uh, uh, bulk genome is separated from the other type of genome. Separated from the main genome with the help of centrifugation. So while you perform centrifugation, two peaks are obtained. one is called as the the higher peak which is of bulk genome and there is a minor peak after centrifugation which is of unique sequences that is 0.1% genome that we are going to use for dna fingerprinting this minor peak is also known as satellite dna so satellite dna are actually the 0.1% of unique genome made up of usually repetitive sequences that are used for dna fingerprinting in order to establish paternity related problems or solving some criminal cases correct yes or no now this satellite dna depending upon the base composition length of the segment and number of repeats of those repetitive sequences the satellite dna can be of two types so next you are going to write that satellite which is the minor genome beta can be of two type mini satellite or micro satellite that is on the basis of base composition that whether are they at rich or gc rich so base composition length of the segment and on the basis of their number of repeats because they are repetitive sequences so number of repeats there are two types mini and micro mini satellites for example one which is very common is vntr variable number of tandem repeats vntr there about 0.1 to 20 kb long these micro satellite for example str short tandem repeats they are just 1 to 6 base pair long so they are too short see they are too short so micro satellites they are not utilized for dna fingerprinting in satellite the preferred sequences the preferred sequences for dna fingerprinting are vntr because at least they are sufficient long enough to study and compare and uh, yes to compare the sequences okay now there are variable number of tandem repeats short form is vntr so vntrs are used 
out of that 0.1% of unique genome in order to study DNA fingerprinting. Now, next important point is beta. The number of repeats of these VNTR, they are variable from individual to individual and chromosome to chromosome. So, next point you are going to write is the number of repeats. Not the sequence, the number of repeats of VNTR are variable from individual to individual and chromosome to chromosome. Right? That means if suppose there is one VNTR sequence which is repeated 11 times in my chromosome 1, so maybe that same VNTR with same sequence in chromosome 2 is repeated 5 times. In 3 it is it may be repeated 2 times. So they are showing polymorphism. So now, okay, and if suppose in my chromosome 1 that is repeated for 11 times, maybe in my partner chromosome 1 the same sequence of VNTR may be repeated for 6 times. So, individual to individual, the same sequence of VNTR, their number of repeats are variable and within the same individual, chromosome to chromosome also, the number of repeats of VNTR are variable. This is known as polymorphism and this is the basic principle of DNA fingerprinting. So, if someone asks you a question that what is the principle behind DNA fingerprinting, then your answer will be polymorphism shown by mini satellites, shown by VNTR in terms of the number of repeats which is variable from chromosome to chromosome of an individual as well as from individual to individual. Plus beta, these polymorphisms are inheritable. That means if my chromosome 1 is having a VNTR which is having 10 repeats. Now if that chromosome 1 goes to my child, so my child is going to receive one chromosome from me and another chromosome from my partner. So if suppose that chromosome 1 is having 11 repeats in my body, then same will be trans uh, transported to my child also. So these polymorphisms, they are inheritable. So next important thing you have to write is that polymorphism exhibited by VNTR exhibited by is inheritable. So polymorphism exhibited by VNTR is inheritable. Understood this much? Okay, so now Let's do from the beginning so that things are more clear. DNA fingerprinting, the concept was explained by Alec Jaffrey. So he is known as father of DNA fingerprinting. However, it, in India, it was first introduced by Dr. Lalji Singh. So he is known as father of Indian DNA fingerprinting. The basis of DNA fingerprinting is polymorphism, which is exhibited by the mini satellites that forms the unique portion of everyone's genome. And yes, these VNTR, they show polymorphism in terms of the number of repeats, which is variable from chromosome to chromosome and individual to individual. Only 0.1% of genome is unique in every individual. Otherwise, 99.9% .9 of the genome is same. Next important thing, beta, to sample. I told that one of the use of DNA fingerprinting is to solve the criminal cases. How? The, there's, a, there's a criminal side, there's a crime side. From there, you can pick up the sample and you can match the sample with the suspect. Now, that sample can be saliva, can be hair, can be sperm, any. Your any body part can act as a sample for DNA fingerprinting. Why? 
because every body part has the same cells having the same number of chromosome having the same arrangement of nucleotide sequence so any body part hair follicles sperm blood saliva any can act as the sample so next important point is sample form dna fingerprinting sample of dna can be any like maybe blood saliva hair follicle sperm etc because everywhere the same cells are present same chromosome same repeats everything thing okay now you are going to see the, now you have understood the principle behind dna fingerprinting now let's check out the steps first step is collect the sample any sample and from that sample isolate a cell so first step is beta collect the sample and isolate a cell now you have a cell from that cell take out all the dna so second step is isolate the dna from the cell now dna is double stranded whole all the chromosomes you have isolated 2.2 meter long dna you have double stranded dna you have as a whole you cannot study so third step is make the fragment cut the dna with the help of restriction endonuclease so next step is cut the dna into fragments with the help of restriction endonuclease now dna is double stranded but for dna fingerprinting we need dna that has to be single stranded so next step after cutting dna into fragment is obtain the single stranded form of dna you can simply denature them right so convert double stranded dna fragments into single stranded because we don't want double stranded dna we want single stranded fragments of dna so after obtaining fragment you have to convert double stranded state into single stranded that for that you can just denature it into single stranded state now all the fragments are in mixture we just want every fragment should be separate from each other so to in order to separate each fragment gel electrophoresis is done separate each fragment with the help of gel electrophoresis that is done on which agros gel now what happens you load your sample on the agros gel right and then suppose this is my agros gel this is the base on which i have loaded my sample having fragments of single stranded dna and then i will connect it with the help of electric current now what is there dna is negatively charged so it will move from the negative towards the positive charge smaller the fragment they will run more they will cover more distance on the gel and bigger the fragment it will remain near to the start point so like this all the fragment on the basis of their size will be separated from each other now this is how the scenario takes place you can write over here all the fragments all the single stranded <sighs> dna fragments 
separates from each other on the basis of their size chhota wala upar hoga bada wala niche hoga separates from each other on the basis of size now after doing this much the next step is beta this is agros gel your fragments you have obtained the fragments on agros gel but the base is weak any time agros gel can break and your whole fragment will be lost so we want to transfer all my dna fragment to a strong base like nitrocellulose so the next step is blotting southern blotting in order to transfer separated dna fragments on a strong base now this is weak na gel gel to halka weak hota hai if it breaks if you if you just mishandle this agros gel it will break and if it breaks then your whole process till here will become waste again you will have to isolate a cell again you have to start the process so just to avoid that we need to transfer in order to transfer dna fragments on a strong base like nitrocellulose what is required blotting is required so next step after gel electrophoresis after gel electrophoresis is blotting which blotting southern we have three types of blotting southern western and eastern but when we do it for dna it is known as southern blotting correct okay so this is my southern blotting has been done now all the fragments from agros gel has been transferred to nitrocellulose after this the next step will be hybridizing the single stranded dna with the help of the vntr probes now what is this so first let me write this step hybridization of single stranded dna with the help of radioactive labeled vntr probes with the help of vntr probes in order to know the number of repeats and sequences of the dna fragments in order to know the number of repeats and sequences of single stranded dna now what happens beta suppose this is my nitrocellulose paper on which all the dna fragments on the basis of their length are separated now these dna they are single stranded okay now these dna are only 0.1% of the genome which is unique they are basically the vntr portion of the dna now what will happen in the already in the lab with the help of human genome project we know that what are the actual vntrs present in a human see whatever vntr i will have you will also have the same vntr same sequence it is just that if in my body that vntr is repeating for 10 times on chromosome 1 so your same vntr may be repeating for 12 times in your chromosome number 1 so only the number of repeats are variable however the sequence of vntr in every individual is same theek hai yahan tak aage baat samajh mein ab hoga kya what you have to do you just have to check that how many number of repeats of the same dna fragment is present on the different chromosome now for that hybridization step is required now okay 
with the help of human genome project i was telling you we have isolated all the vntr and we know that how many possible vntrs are there in human and their sequences accordingly we have prepared artificial vntr suppose 100 vntrs are present in any human body with x sequences all those 100 complementary vntr are prepared and kept in the lab known as probe so probes kya hote hain probes are basically artificially prepared complementary sequence of vntr suppose 100 vntr are present in an individual so 100 complementary sequences are already prepared for those vntr called as probe now to this hybridized or to this uh, fragment to on this nitrocellulose paper now all those 100 vntrs will be added now those 100 vntr they will go and bind to their complementary that means to the original vntr suppose these are those probes now probes are also single stranded they are complementary to original vntr and they all are radioactively labeled so that they will give some radioactive emissions so that we can detect okay suppose one is having blue color emission one is tagged with a radioactive substance having blue color emission one is with maybe red color one maybe is with blue green color so different color emission containing radioactive elements are associated with each strand of the probe right now scientists know that which red which we probe is having which color now suppose this blue color probe goes and binds to it complementary sequence and start emitting radiation start giving blue color okay so here i will come to know now after hybridization the last step is auto radiography that means to detect the emissions now once all the probe has binded to their complementary sequences every probe after that they emit the light so which light is being emitted where that you have to detect with the help of auto radiography so the last step is this now what happens suppose my blue colored emitting probe has binded to the third fragment so now i will come to know about its sequences why because obviously the blue colored probe has associated with the third fragment because it has found it complementary hence it got bind now i know the sequences of the probe so automatically i will come to know the sequence of my unknown dna fragment now suppose 10 probes of this blue emitting light i have added and if all those 10 probes they got an opportunity to bind with the fragment that means same fragment is repeating for 10 times so now i know the sequence of the vntr and i know the number of repeat same i can i can do with all my dna fragments i can know their sequence and i can know their number of repeat clear so this is how dna fingerprinting is done with the help of vntr which are used as probe which is which is then allowed to hybridize with the original dna fragment there i can know the sequence because probe will bind to its complementary dna only and adding n number of probe of every vntr will get an opportunity to bind and to tell us their number of repeats clear understood everyone these are the, the steps now suppose beta what happens i am having a dna fingerprinting result of a sample collected from criminal site and i have two suspects and i have also obtained their in fingerprinting result so this is suspect a and suspect b suppose the result of sample site dna tells that chromosome 1 So this is chromosome one. This is chromosome two. 
क्रोमोसोम थ्री फोर फाइव Now chromosome one is having a VNTR suppose which is repeating for three times. Chromosome two is having maybe the same VNTR but it is repeating for four times. Here it is repeating for two times, one time, five times. So this is the result I came to know with the help of DNA fingerprinting. Now I am having two suspects. Now suspect chromosome one. Here also one, two, three, four, five. Now, if A would have been the criminal, then their DNA fingerprinting result will be exactly matching to the sample site. And if B would have been the criminal, their result will exactly match with sample site. See here, suppose three repeats, four repeats, two, one, five. If the same results come for A, then A is my criminal, but not B. Understood, everyone? That how the DNA fingerprinting is done. It is a very simple, simple technique. Simply, you have to learn three points. One, that ninety-nine point nine percent of the genome is discarded during DNA fingerprinting. Only those point one unique sequences are used. Second, those point one percent unique sequences are called a satellite. Two category mini micro micro rejected because they are too small to study. So micro satellite mini satellites are considered called as VNTR. These VNTR they show polymorphism in terms of the number of repeats that varies from individual to individual and chromosome to chromosome. Now this can be detected with the help of artificially created probe. Kept in the lab that are made to hybridize, they are radioactively labeled. Once they bind with their complementary DNA fragment, then they emit light. The number of lights emitted by the probe we can count. We can come to know the sequence as well as the number of repeat, and then we can match it with the suspect and the sample site. Right? Understood, everyone? So this is for today. Some questions. Who is known as the father of DNA fingerprinting? not indian father next question what is the principle of dna fingerprinting i hope you all will be able to solve these two questions you will get some dpps also to solve i hope you all have understood this chapter so with this we come to the end of the chapter molecular basis of inheritance i really really have a good hope that you all have listened to all the lectures in sequences if still you have not listened then please first of all start with the lecture number 1 and then with sequence come to the last lecture so that you understand each and every step explained to you and do not forget to mention in the comment section if you really enjoyed them thank you for watching me see you in the next class bye bye everyone take care